Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Uh, I remember uh, last time ending quite um, anticlimactically as our opponent ran away because we played h4 uh, or a4, I don't remember. So today um, we'll do a little bit less subtlety and we'll try to provoke our opponent with a3 instead of a4. Also a3 has the flexibility that uh, this pawn is actually protected by the other. And actually, while we add it, why not play b4? Grabbing a uh, space on the, the queen side. And since we play b4, which is usually the best move on the board, um, if it's a good move, it, it should be played. Let's put the bishop here on the long diagonal, looking at stuff. And yeah, I'm gonna go for knight f3 in this position. I don't know if it's good, but the thing is, I'm trying to provoke e4 here, which he doesn't do. And if he went for e4, we could have, you know, gone for some nasty uh, little things. So now that our opponent has not done this, you can see that our bishop is kind of looking at granite, um, which is not good. And now he might be provoking e4, but then he drops the pawn, so I'm not scared of that. And uh, the thing here in this position is that um, uh, black has a good center, right? And we should try to challenge the center in some sort of way. So I might, what comes to mind is to either play e3 or e4 here. e3 would you know, lead to maybe some... Uh, Ideas of capturing, well, e4 just grabs space uh, because that's what you need to do. You need to take control of the central squares. Uh, so both moves look fine. Uh, let's go for e3, a little bit more subtle because we played a3, e3, you know. And maybe a little bit more in line with the opening we are playing. So bishop g4. Pins are knight to the queen and threatens therefore to play e4 because then if a knight moves we lose the queen and if he just stay put um, we lose our knights obviously. So we can either play h3 or we can develop the bishop to e2. Either move looks fine to me. Let's be principled and play e2, bishop e2. And the downside of bishop e2 that there is maybe a, a slight, very slight chance that he plays d3 here, ruining our pawn structure, but also sacrificing the pawn it would be very. I don't think it's uh, good in this position, so I'm not. Um, yeah, I'm not too scared of this. And the flexibility of playing h3 is definitely all still on the board, as um, there is a piece on our side of the board, we need to kind of neutralize it. And bishops are usually not such a big problem, because the bishop controls almost the same amount of squares from this point until that point. So the bishop is actually, you could say the bishop is a little bit misplaced. Uh, so yeah. C5. Turning to take. Um, here I recommend either playing B5 or taking ourselves, but that would ruin our pawn structure first off, you know, getting this part of pawn structure, and secondly, our bishop is then on pre, uh, being very likely to be attacked in the next moves. But there is an upside, because after takes, takes, we can actually take here. Which I just realized, and after bishop takes, bishop takes, queen b6, a 
attacking the uh, the bishop on b2. We should try to realize that, you know, in the worst case scenario, our knight has to drop back to d3, and that's still fine with a question mark. We also developed three pieces, and he had developed two, so breaking it open might not be the best move, but it's definitely interesting. I, would, I want to see what this will lead to. So he takes. My idea was indeed taking. If it takes here, we definitely take here. If it's there, there. Queen of three is not possible on bishop takes. Yeah, okay, I think. I think we can uh, go for this um, for this line. Takes, takes. Queen b6 expected, and then we'll drop our back. Well, I guess we just drop back our knight to d3, asking do you want to trade, being a pawn down. Also know that the bishop pairs are just off the board and in end games this is just a very nice thing to have. Our opponent, instead of uh, playing queen b6, plays queen g5 instead. I think the knight. Um, yeah, this, this just feels... Off. This feels off because Queen B6 was usually, you know, when you calculate a line um, and you get surprised by your opponent, it's either a, a brilliant move, like you missed it simply because, you know, it's a great sacrifice, whatever, but it could also be because it's a blunder. And in this case, I really feel it's a blunder, pretty for the reason that Queen B6 would have also guarded. The b5 square, and now the b5 square um, is on pre. It checks this, it attacks this. You know, if it goes up, we could even give a check. There's a lot. You can even play f4 here, by the way. But this, this, this just seems simply winning. Um, yeah, so let's play it. If he goes queen e1, um, let's see, we have this check. Knight f3 would drop the knight. And f3 takes here. Oh, I guess we just go back and ask him the same question. So knight takes, queen takes. You know, knight takes, pawn takes, takes is very clear to me. As we would win the rook, we check, but knight takes, queen takes is something we might have to consider, but after going back, let's say queen here, we can, king there, we could take, we check, uh, and if he goes here, we have mates. So, let's go for knight takes. And as you can see, being very provocative in the opening, you know, on any level. Uh, could be very helpful as our opponent plays worse moves than he usually does. If the position was different, and let's say we uh, had a pawn on d3, we were the ones we have to be uh, careful in that position because there our opponent could have given a check there and actually um, <laughs> taken our queen there for free which occasionally does happen where I just blunder a queen but in this situation I feel totally safe and sound by just playing this move back our uh, opponent only has three legal moves Two of which where we just take, and one of which will give a mate. And we evaluated this, those, all those positions as winning. And uh, yeah, we'll simply go for it.
And after here, check, let's say, that's also possible. Is there a mate here? No, I thought this would be maybe beneficial here. But after king here, don't see the actual benefit because knife takes, he takes here. So let's take like this. He has to go back. And I don't see a king blow there, but uh, it's definitely a blow to deal with. And knight here, blocking. So now, you know, you could really think about your own plan here, but that actually works counterintuitive, I feel. Because there's no sort of mate, you could waste your time, but you could also just, you know, look at your opponent's plan when you don't know what to do. And, you know, maybe this rook has to be moved a little. Just a little bit. And we don't worry about the pawn, we are up so much material that this pawn is very insignificant. As long as our position stays intact, we don't get mated, I, uh, I feel very safe here. Alright. Our queen is being attacked. We could take a pawn here on a7, or we could take a pawn on d4. And here, we don't even also need, we don't need to take, we can also just remove the queen. But, um, yeah. I feel as the queen takes d4 is slightly better than a7, because the queen on d4 is in the center of the board, and the king queen on a7 is just very much out of play. So in terms of positional play, this is good. After rook takes, um, there, attacking the bishop, not really, because the queen is defending it. You can maybe go for a knight here, check, go back, and yeah. I don't know. Actually, after knight, after queen takes, we are, if he takes on c2, we are threatening mates. We have mates. So, there is actually no threat on the board. Knight c6 takes. Knight c6. Maybe even go here. And let's not forget, there's a queen on g2. This kind of seems uh, out of play, but... There are some squares to um, to consider here. Backwards move, which is not easy to see, because let's say you go here and you go queen d5, turning mate, you actually blunder your queen. It's actually very uh, thematical to do that on my level. So maybe queen f4 could be played. We can even play queen g4 with a double attack if knight c6 happens. Knight there instead. And knight there actually covered this square. Which uh, is an nice move. Huh? And as re previously realized, we have a plethora of options, so many options that we almost can't decide what to do. Let's check the checks. Here, here. Don't see continuation. Well, actually. No, I don't. Uh, here, blunder the queen. We realized that beforehand, but queen g4 just seems very reasonable to deal with. Taking the knights, um, taking the queen, forcing a trade of queens, and it's very unspectacular. There's no kill here, but uh, it's definitely a move. And hopefully, don't blunder mate in this position. Hopefully. But he definitely has to react to this move. Now we wish to place uh, knight c3 to stop 
Brook from Ever getting a palm with a disposition should be winning. Uh, no matter how many palms he lose, because we're simply up two pieces. And the only thing we have to really worry about is getting made it. Three ticks. A pawn. And notice how offside the queen now is. It's literally not doing anything. You just grab the pawn. And yeah, we simply grab the knight, we turn and mate. I don't see uh, how black is gonna continue the attack here. We also could consider mating like this. He does actually see the mate, which is good, I guess. And um, yeah, where's the killing blow? I don't see it. And if you don't see it, you don't need to look for it. Let's play knight c3. The position is this much winning, and our opponent just believes if he plays on, he, I might flag, which sometimes does happen, but here I'm honestly not that worried about it. Uh, he's actually not threatening to take like this, he's threatening to take like this, because the pawn is actually pinned to the king. So I think this n little nefty move is quite nice to go knight here, actually protecting the knight with the bishop. Uh, this pawn is actually also protected, so ev actually everything is fine, mainly because we have more pieces so he cannot attack as much as he wants to. He only has two pieces that can attack. That can attack this pawn doesn't really count because it's pinned and yeah he does take there um, yeah you could try to find a mate but you could also just yeah take a piece and then okay he does get a piece back but we just want a rook again without ruining our position if that makes sense queen there doesn't see a piece that is free and instead just a uh, defense the square where you might get made it on and I might see a very nice kill here which starts with queen c5 king here would be mate so if you so after queen c5 here hmm I think this is a nice kill. Boom, 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 double check, boom, and mate. That's a very nice mate. It's almost like you're getting squeezed. Um, win, please don't play this. Please don't play this. Please go here. Uh, and then after this check, you go back. Because, you know, you don't have a, you have background problems, so to say, because, oh wow. And then knight e7. Knight g3, double check. And again, this is mate. Uh, if he goes here, this is mate. Wow. Uh, yeah. Is there a better mate? Yes, there is actually a back rank mate. I think this is a little bit better. Because these squares are... Fuck, I just couldn't touch my queen. Oops, shit, shit, shit. I just totally forgot that the queen existed. Oh no, oh no, that's horrible, that's horrible. Oh, that's, that's terrible chess. That's just terrible chess. Uh, I have no excuses to get out of this one. But that's... That was just terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. And I think our opponent is shocked as well. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Let's 
go here. The thing is, like, we're still are winning, you know, factually. So this can get very instructive. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't take away the, from the fact that I just blundered my queen. That's the problem. That's the problem. So he's still on flagging mood, I think. Let's go here. It's like this. The only downside is that the rook is uh, and defended there. Yeah. Bring the king into the game. Mm. Very much not behind my move here, but you know, you have to. You have to do anything. Something. And maybe a good piece placement would be this, but I'm really scared of those checks here. I don't feel like my last move has been very good by the case of king safety, but a queen on her own doesn't inflict that much damage. Maybe a rook h1 would have been a good move. But the king on e1 was actually quite safe. This is actually very risky. I'm not so happy with that move. Because there now our knight has an escape square, so let's just get the knight out. Oh, that's uh, that's fair. That's this is, was the reason that. Uh, yeah, let's attack a pawn. Improve the position a bit. This is all on the board. Ooh, this is gonna be a very hard game, actually. Another check. All right, it's time to head back. You know, we admit the mistake. The king only two was not safe. And now the king is very safe. Your opponent's taking uh, some good moves here. And it might be very likely that our opponent might win this one. But uh, we have a clear plan of um, some back rank mates. Most of our opponents, I don't really know what his plan will be. If he plays queen e4, we have the sack, obviously. So, yeah. Let's give this check, nevertheless. Stabilize this dudes. Um, yeah, not right here maybe. Knight here, check, here, check, here, check, here. Check. Back. And we have a discovery there. So if. So we can utilize these squares. So we actually have control over all other squares there. But. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's go here. Grab this pawn. The very least. Yeah, everything uh, still under good protection. Not dissatisfied with my play. There, check. And I think there's a mating pattern if he goes here. If check mate. 
Uh, if he goes here, I think he's safe, actually. Well, actually, no. We win the queen there. So I have to check. Oh, he goes there. He does go for it. Wow. Wow, we do get a very nice mate in the end. Now we will double check. Now we will definitely double check. King can only go here. And here. Now the queen is not here. So, uh... I think it's safe to say that this is mate. Yes! Oh! <sighs> no backwards move. Uh, so as you can see, uh, I'm so what higher rated. We do make the same mistakes. Backwards move are just hard to see. I just even mentioned it before. Like, ah, oh, the queen's protecting c8 square. I forget. Because I don't see, I forget. Um, yeah, but we still won the game. Let's analyze. <laughs> it's... Uh, I also saw another mate. It's so it's so bad. It's so bad. Engine will say, "Ah, oh, you took a longer route to victory, but it was so bad." I'm actually wondering what Engine says. Eighty-one percent accuracy. We were never in trouble. Yeah, of course we won't. This is the reason why I don't believe uh, in engines. Honestly, come on. Yeah, and all right. So this was the opening. And the usual setup in his opening, let's just go through a bit of, of theory, is that um, you are trying, let's say, black doesn't really go aggressive and overextends, or overextends. Let's say he does normal developing move. The normal setup here is, okay, if he plays this, we can play b4, b5. And we actually get a decent position, you know, we uh, win the pawn. But I think the normal setup is something like this. Let's, let's say castles here, knight here. Something like this, so this is something you can keep in mind. You play for c4, knight d2. It's kind of like a queen's gambit, but then a little bit worse. Okay, in this position maybe. Uh, shit's not good, but uh, you get the gist of it. I play a few weak moves just to get the setup in. Shouldn't do that, but you generally just know what to do. So e3, challenging the center. c3 was best. Bishop g4, knight e2. Sorry, uh, bishop e2 takes to deflect the bishop. The bishop here was overloaded, so we could take after making sure everything was good and after this move I prepared knight uh, d3 which was very apparently not the greatest move here but you have to do something about this apparently the best move here is to take which makes sense on d4 and after the bishop drops back so I missed this uh, switching look we can then uh, defend our knight via c4 instead of d3, which is a bit more active. Uh, I definitely agree. But instead, we played queen g5. It's very bad. We take, give this check, take, and get the rook back into safety. We take here, as this pawn here would get our queen a bit out of play. It's definitely still winning. By a big margin, but taking on d4 definitely felt more important. Offering a trade of queens, and here I think we played a plethora of very good moves. Queen e6, oof, very killing. Queen e7 also, but he went for a very simple play, and after this, we could have just mated him on e7, but instead, we just decided to blunder our queen and. Yeah, play this out. King e2, definitely not a good move. I think the yeah, better moves are something like this, you know, getting something ready. Uh, the rooks don't have to be connected. You know, it's a good idea, that's the reason why I did it, but in this position, it actually just worsens our position as we allow a lot of checks and resources, which is harder to spot. After a few moves, we get some... Uh, Chance for mate. I do wonder what I did. I would do here. Oh, there's b7 mate. I saw c6 here and knight here. 
here and then we pick the queen off. That's what I saw, you know. If I blundered the queen, why don't you blunder the queen? But uh, our opponent just allowed us to beat him. That's also very nice of him, you know, to let us win. So that's the game. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you guys next time.